Oh yeah, look at this, it's coming in hot. Oh, you see it dancing, look. Look at that. Oh man. <laughs> oh. Looks like a ghost. Whoa! Yeah! Oh my god! It just. <laughs> Look. Oh my. Hey, what's up guys? So tonight I am out here in the North Sister Pool Out, well in Kodiak obviously, and uh, I'm setting up a little time lapse. Let me show you what I'm working with right now. I got my EOS R with my 24 to 7, or sorry, 15 to 30 on there. I don't even have a 24 to 70. I don't know why I said that. I got it shuttered. My, my remote shutter there, my settings, tonight are four seconds two eight twelve fifty it is a really windy night again of course and uh i got a new microphone the deity d4 duo along with a uh an adapter to put my loom cube on as well for a light so i can vlog at night time so i'm purposely standing out here in the wind i want to see how this microphone holds up in the wind and I'm just gonna sit in my truck like a weird photographer because all the pros just stand outside the whole time obviously and uh, yeah we'll see how this time lapse goes we'll see if anything happens along the way all right so as I'm sitting in my truck waiting for the northern lights if they come I figured I could take this time to explain to you guys how you can see the northern lights if you go up north into Alaska or Iceland or Finland or Norway or wherever you go up north Canada even if you go to North Dakota and sit at near the border uh, you can see them um, anywhere North America uh, you can north of North America you can see them uh, so the northern states and Canada Alaska anyway so I want to talk about how you can see them um, so the first thing I can recommend is go to a website called spaceweather.com. That is the best website to learn anything that's happening in space or cool weather patterns. Uh, they update it every single day and they have a time machine that goes back so you can see data from years ago, which is really cool because I learned a lot about how some of the biggest northern light storms, how they occurred, what to look for in the sun and whatnot. It takes a lot of... Uh, everyday learning um, it's not something I could teach you in one video it's something you have to pay attention to daily so anyway let's talk about apps now uh, there are two apps that I recommend let me show them to you okay here are the two apps that I like it's called Aurora the purple one and Aurora alerts with the guy standing I like those apps because uh, the purple one shows me the long-range forecast and it's pretty handy and the other one shows me live data. Both of these are coming off of spaceweather.com, so they are fairly accurate, and you just have to understand how to read them. So we'll start with the purple app called Aurora. And when you first open it, this is what it looks like. It shows you the clouds, and it shows you the KP, which I'll explain in a minute. Right now it's 5.65, which is really high, 5.67, um, which is pretty high. And if you click this tab, it shows you the solar winds. I'm going to explain that on the other app in just a moment here. And they have some cool gallery stuff. Uh, I was featured on this before, which was pretty cool. Um, so those are the two apps. and Or that's one app, Aurora. Let me show you Aurora Alerts now. This is what it looks like when you first open it. It shows you a percentage on the horizon and a percentage overhead. However, uh, the app is overloaded right now. So it usually happens when like there's an expected storm that happens. 
Um, anyway, let me explain to you guys what you're looking for. So we have the KP index. That's in yellow. It says four is the overall average. Um, and this is if a storm is coming or going, it will tell you expected. It's not guaranteed, but that is expected. So the first thing that you can look at is the speed. The speed is the wind speed of the Aurora. And yes, there are winds way up there, solar winds they're called. The faster it is, the better off it is because it's more more particles in the air that can that make the um, the Aurora just appear better. So you want that. If it's over 500, it's good. If it's over 600, it's really good. Anything over 600 is really good. I'm just, I just so you guys know, I'm giving you a basic rundown. I'm not a NASA person or whatnot. So this is just a basic rundown. The next one is the BZ. This is almost as important as the KP. These two are the most important. The BZ is how far north or south the Aurora goes. You want the BZ to keep going south, so negative. Negative is good with the BZ. However, if you live in Fairbanks, don't you don't even have to look at this app. You could just go out every night and you're not gonna see them every night. However, you have a really good chance of seeing them. Especially if the BZ and the KP are co kind of cooperating. However, the, B the KP does not really matter in Fairbanks. I've seen it at zero KP up there. Uh, the density is how colorful, how vibrant, how thick the Aurora is. And the BT is almost similar to the BZ, but it's not as necessary to understand as a beginner. So let me give you a good example of what you want to look for if you're in Kodiak, which is where I live, which is 58 degrees north. If you're not sure where you are, you can Google any town and type in Kodiak longitude and latitude and it will tell you the latitude. Kodiak is at 58 degrees north. So a good aurora storm is first of all clear skies which is very rare and you want it to be at least KP5. It can, I seen it yesterday at KP2. Just because it's lower does not mean that you're not going to see it. So anyway, um, so a, this is just a good storm, a good aurora storm. KP5 620 speed, okay. BZ, negative eight, negative five, negative six, negative seven, negative eight. Anything past negative five is really good. Density, 12, 13. Let me show you what that looks like in the sky here in Kodiak. Right now. You can see that on the screen. That's what that storm looked like, and that was last year. That's actually was KP6. So that was in August of 2019. Wait, yeah, August of 2019, wow. It feels like so short ago. And now let me say, if you live in Fairbanks, uh, what it looks like right now is pretty good. You, you'll you probably see them if you live in Fairbanks. Just go where the, the skies are clear. So that's a quick, quick rundown on the app. And I'm in my truck right now because I'm just waiting for these Aurora to maybe show up. So if you live in, if you're in Fairbanks, really up north, above 60 degrees north, Especially like 62. I think I think Fairbanks is 62 degrees north. Anything past that, um, if it's clear sky, just go out and look because you never know. But the number one thing is going out and just going out and relaxing, not expecting anything, and just understanding that you might wait for six hours for 10 minutes of the northern lights. However, you might go out for 10 hours every night as it could be clear dark and never see a thing that it could be expected to have uh, storms it does not mean you're going to see anything if you're in Fairbanks or up north anywhere the further up north you are the better the naked the eye looks depending on the storm um, so for example like a KP3 would probably look pretty good with the naked eye in Fairbanks where a KP3 with where you could see it on the horizon might look just like a cloud in Kodiak. Even a KP5, it almost looks like a white cloud that dances. And it's kind of disheartening to some people. However, the more you watch it and you let your eyes adjust, it definitely you can definitely see the green a lot of the time. And you just have to understand what you're looking at. Um, 
sometimes I think I see the Northern Lights, but it's really just clouds. But sometimes I think it's a cloud, but it's really the Aurora. After seeing it so many times, I'm kind of used to it and I know what it looks like now. But that's just kind of, you know, a basic rundown of everything. Um, for you, if you're taking a trip to Iceland or wherever you're going, um, that's what you need to expect with the Aurora. Do not expect to see it. Expect that it is a very, very lucky experience if you don't live there and you see them because there is a lot to take it in, into consideration. You need clear skies from the earth. You need a good sun flare that created a CME event or I'm not getting into that, but you need something like that. You need to have a little bit of knowledge on the app, which I kind of just explained to you guys. Uh, first of all, any questions, you can leave them down below. Um, so you need clear skies, a good solar storm. That's, you know, the sun, what the sun does and whatnot and, you know, the speed of the aurora. And you need dark skies, obviously. And you need to have fun and just be patient because uh, if you put enough time into it, you will see them eventually. So that means if you get off the plane and you're really tired and you say, I'm just going to go to bed tonight, even though it's clear out, I'm not seeing anything yet. I'm just going to go to bed. I'm super tired. That's going to be the night they're out, guys. I'm telling you, that's going to be the night they're out. Because when you when you sleep in the daytime and you get prepared for a nighttime event, it doesn't happen. So you got to understand that is something that can happen. Because other people see them doesn't mean like, oh, you like how did you know the Northern Lights were out? Most of the time, it's just because they like to sit outside and just wait. And like me, I'm leaving my camera running. It's been running for like three hours now. And uh, I don't think anything has come yet. I will look after I've, I'm done recording this video. But uh, guys, listen, just plan your event. Uh, if I were in the, living in a lower 48 or something and I had two weeks to come to Alaska, I would come to Fairbanks, Alaska in the first two weeks of September because it hasn't snowed yet. The weather is somewhat okay occasionally. And... Uh, you're, the dark skies are, are finally there. So uh, you're probably getting dark from like that time, like 9.30 to, you know, and you got to you know, all night. Um, if you're going to Iceland, man, that's, that's a tough call. I say you go probably for at least two weeks as well, if not three. Uh, it, it is expensive and that's something that you have to understand. Uh, it, 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 it's like an expensive trip to come up here and it's very remote. It takes a lot of, um, you know, money to get things here. And that's why you come here and things are very expensive. So the one good thing is when you travel after September, between September and April, you are not having to pay that much money for, um, your car and hotel. So it is definitely the cheaper time to come. The summertime is a lot more expensive. Uh, but guys, I'm going to end this information on you guys and just let you take it all in. And please leave any comments down below. I will give you a reply. And uh, it, or if there's a lot of people asking one thing, I will give a general pinned uh, reply. So thank you for watching and good luck to you guys. I really pray that you guys get to see them and uh, just go out every night. That's all you got to do.